Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. Uh, just a few announcements as we begin worship. A reminder that Faith will be gathering for their annual congregational meeting on Sunday, January 30th, immediately following the 11 a.m. worship service. Also, as we um, move into the month of February and prepare for the Super Bowl with our football teams, we are doing a special event at St. James called Super Bowl Gathering. Um, soup for the Super Bowl, we are gathering uh, extra cans of soup, uh, regular or cream and condensed soups. Uh, you can come in and place them on the table in favor of your favorite team as we prepare for the countdown for that. Uh, those of you from Faith, if you are looking for items to donate, um, Faith and Light Food Pantry in particular could use pasta, spaghetti noodles, um, and then um, pasta, spaghetti noodles, and fruit, canned fruit. So thank you so much for your support. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. That comforted by your promises, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the eighth chapter of Nehemiah. All the people of Israel gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen. Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites, who taught the people, said to the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go on your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, 
and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens, and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandments of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. A reading from the 12th chapter of first Corinthians for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body though many are one body so it is with Christ for in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body Jews or Greeks slaves or free and we were all made to drink of one spirit Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chooses. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Do all work miracles? 
Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? No, but strive for greater gifts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bring, proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
we were feeling better. We were, I was feeling so much more optimistic that maybe, maybe we were kind of be coming through the, to the end of this. And then, this last week, I began to realize that that weariness had started all over again. That we're just not seeing an end to this anytime soon. I especially noticed it last Sunday as I gathered with people in worship. I noticed it in regard to not being able to see as many people on Sunday morning. That there's so many who don't feel safe gathering here in our spaces. Last Sunday, I, I stood before both Faith and St. James, and I looked out over so many empty pews again. And I just sighed. Now, please do not hear this as a complaint or any kind of an accusation. I absolutely am not trying to place any kind of a guilt trip on people. I understand that people do not feel safe. I don't blame you. Looking at the numbers yesterday that were shared by the state of Indiana, our own county has more than 30% positivity rate. And those are the ones that have been reported. Not alone, though, not to mention those that were home tests that probably aren't recorded anywhere. I understand that people don't feel safe get it. My own healthy children who follow the right steps ended up with COVID these last several weeks. I tell my own parents, stay home. So I get it. I don't blame people. I blame this, this virus. I blame this tiny microscopic thing that seems to be wielding such power over us, that, that seems to be causing such disruption and chaos, that's wreaking such a havoc in our life, and it's not ending. I blame it. And this frustration, this impatience that it would just end by now, and the disappointment with what we've lost and may not get back. It all just some days gets a little too heavy. And it's in those moments that I just can't help crying out to God about it. Now when that kind of thing happens, when I just can't deal with stuff or when I'm struggling with things like this, I turn to phrases or passages or stories and scriptures. I, I use some of that holy language to cry out to God. Phrases that I've picked up over the years from pastors or professors or other lay people. Stories that I learned growing up. Passages I've learned in my own devotions and Bible studies like the lament from the Psalms that was shared with many of us at Synod Assembly years ago. How long, O oh God, have mercy, especially as we are coming up on two years. This one has been a popular one. How long, O oh God, how long, O oh God, will we live in this? How long must your people endure? How long must we be cut off and turned away? How long will we live in fear of something we cannot see but yet feel the effects of? How long will we be separated from one another? How long will people suffer not just from COVID but suffer from all the other things that seem to be holding us back? Suffering from anxiety and depression, from from just missing one another. How long will we have to live through this? How long, oh God, have mercy? For me, it helps to speak these words, to pray them, to say it out loud, to cry it at the top of my lungs sometimes, to physically 
lift them up to God in prayer, trusting that God hears it. I need to let it out and let God receive it. Even knowing that I'm probably not going to get any kind of resolution or immediate response. God can't, isn't probably just going to go like that and make COVID go away. I trust that my prayer is heard. I trust that I can use these words of scripture. And then I find myself turning to other stories, other passages of the Bible. I find myself reading about other people, other groups of people who have endured through similar occasions. Always helps to read their stories and listen to how they overcame, how they withstood those challenges in their times and places, to be reminded how God was there with them through all of that. We hear a little of this in our first reading this morning, in the story of Nehemiah and Israel. Now, if you're like me, this was not covered in confirmation class or even really Sunday school. Nehemiah was one of those parts of the Bible that you skipped over when you were trying to find other passages. But in this story, what we hear is that the people had been living in exile. They had been taken into bondage by a foreign king, by King Nebuchadnezzar. They had been taken from Jerusalem and the surrounding lands brought into Babylon, and there they had to follow the practices of their captors. They couldn't worship like they once did. They were unable to read those holy scriptures or have them read for them, because many of them were illiterate. They were unable to praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Moses, the God that rescued them from Israel, or from e Egypt. They were unable to follow those, those laws, those customs, to give sacrifices and offerings, everything that they believed made them righteous in God's sight. But now, in this part of the story, Nehemiah and the others, they have, they have brought the people back to the city of Jerusalem. They have worked night and day. They've restored the walls of protection around the city. They've repaired the breach. They've sustained those areas. They've rebuilt those areas torn down by war and violence. And even as they do this, there are enemies out in the territories threatening them, endangering their lives. And yet they persist. They continue to push themselves to rebuild and restore everything that had been lost. And then when all is ready, when everything has been restored to a place of safety, they gather. They gather at this one gate in the town, in the community, and they read. They hear this word of the Lord read by Ezra the priest, they read that law that had been given to Moses. And as they gather, gather in ways that they had not done for years, they worship God with all their might. They raise their voices and loud amens. They lift up their hands in glory. They bow down in honor. And they weep. They weep, overcome by their unfaithfulness, because they feel as if they are unrighteous, because they could not follow those laws and those years in exile. They weep for what they know they can never repay, and yet weep because they are filled with joy as this good news of God's promise, of God's faithfulness and blessing is read for them once more. They are given hope that just as God rescued the people of Israel from Egypt, God has rescued them. God has brought them back. And God has not abandoned them. 
They weep in hope that God is still their God and they are still God's people. And as I hear their story this week, their hope becomes my hope. Becomes my hope as once again we're feeling separated from God, from our holy places, separated from one another, separated from physical encounters like sharing the peace, like shaking hands and embracing in that sign of peace. Separated from all those things that symbolize God's love and grace for us. I am filled with hope that just as we may have had a moment several years ago, we may have had a span of time when, when we, for the sake of safety, could not be in this space. But yet we were able to return. That even if that happens again, that even if some are not able to be with us, God will restore us. God will bring us back. That just as God led the people back to the city of Jerusalem to rebuild and restore, God will do the same for us. This pandemic will not last. Our separation from one another will not be forever. We will overcome. We will return. There is still hope. Because just as God was with the people of Israel, God is with us, and God has always been. I am filled with hope. Hope in this God who sent God's Son to overcome, to restore all people. I am filled with hope in this one who enters into all those places where there is human brokenness, this one who comes and, and suffers along with us. I am filled with hope in this one who meets us in bread and wine, even if we're separated by distance. I am filled with hope in this one who comes and endures with us. That God is here in the midst of this, in the midst of our frustration and impatience and despair. That God is with us, with all who suffer, that God will restore us. God will bring us back. God will be with us as we hear that word, as we share that supper, as we lift our hands in loud amens and bow in honor. I hold on to hope because I trust in this God who leads us and this God who is with us and in this God who will restore us. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the Church, the world, and all that God has made. You reveal yourself to us in the reading of Scripture. Fulfill your word through the faithful witness of your Church. Send us out to bring your liberating good news to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. All creation proclaims your handiwork. Teach us to love the intricate and beautiful bodies that you have created. Bless tiny insects, enormous whales, and every creature in between. Sustain species at risk of extinction. God of grace, hear our prayer. You desire that there be no dissension among us. Where we are divided in our society, nation, or world, come quickly to reunite us into one body. Ease conflict, dispel violence, and bring an end to war. God of grace, hear our prayer. Anoint with your spirit all who seek your favor. Grant provision and justice for people living in poverty, people living with disability, those living with pain, or those living under oppression. We especially pray for John, Suzanne, Jeremy, Dan, Virginia, and those we name in our hearts. God of all grace, hear our prayer. Build up the body of Christ in this place. Bless the variety of ministries in this, these congregations, especially Faith and Light Food Pantry, St. James Food Pantry, and so much more ministries. Empower us to freely welcome and deeply value each person who enters into worship and ministry among us. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving, we lift before you the saints for whom the promise of salvation has now been fulfilled. Tend to those who mourn, especially the families of Kevin and Paul. Bring us together in your everlasting glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with one another. Thanks to the Lord our God. 
Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Share this gift with those among you, trusting that wherever we gather together as the body of Christ, God is there.
Go in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God.